the research work is about uh, a capabilities measure that was developed and validated uh, within our research. And the, this measure is called uh, the Achieved Capability Questionnaire for Community Mental Health and was supervised by Professor Jose Ornelas. And I take the opportunity also to uh, thank him to uh, accepting the, the, the role of discussion of uh, this webinar. So thank you, everyone. I will share a presentation, may I? Sure, please go ahead. Okay. okay. Um, so as I said, uh, my uh, research, uh, my PhD work focused on a, on a development and validation of a new measure. And today I will try to describe how we uh, achieved these, uh, these developments. And also we'll try to highlight how we think that this measure may contribute to the evaluation and innovation of community mental health program. I would like to start with an historical and institutional framework. Um, the institutionalization is a process uh, with a long history of advances and setbacks. If we consider that the Community Mental Health Centers Act in the United States of America was in 1963, and that in Italy, which is uh, included my country of origin, the Basalia Law was in 1978 with the aim of closing permanently psychiatric institutions. However, this process is still ongoing and continues to be recommended by international policy guidelines such as the United Nations report on the right to physical and mental health. And also at the Portuguese level, the mental health reform and the national plan for mental health foresee among the main axes of intervention, the deinstitutionalization, as well as the expansion of integrated services in the community. Thus, it is important to guarantee that this, these services provide alternative intervention models than the institutional ones. Um, however, the responses are mostly based on a rehabilitation approach and staircase model that implies gradual training and programs in protective contexts. However, scientific evidence highlights that skills learned in protective contexts are not transferable. There is a constant control and assessment by professionals about the supposed readiness of the person and a constant assessment mostly uh, about disabilities and symptoms. The risk, therefore, is that of transinstitutionalization, that is, the reproduction of models of large psychiatric institutions in smaller structures in the community. On the other hand, the perspective of recovery and integration highlights the need for social participation and citizenship in integrated contexts. In these processes, the person's self-determination is central and the provided support is based on individual skills and needs. Programs oriented towards these values, such as import, supported employment and independent housing, are supported by positive results in quality of life, empowerment, and psychological well-being, among other indicators. Given this difference in models of intervention, it is considered necessary to evaluate intervention through an innovative framework so that institu institutionalization models are no longer reproduced. Regarding evaluation, People with experience of mental illness have suffered throughout history from dependence on the systems and lack of control over professional intervention and even more over the evaluation of the service used. This lack of participation is also reflected in the fact that most measures were developed by professionals without taking into account the user's perspective 
and basing on the assessment of disease and symptoms. In this way, the definition of the service outcome is often not relevant to users and is different from their expectation. Thus, new measures that reflect the values and experiences of users are considered necessary, especially in studies on quality of life and organizational results. To develop this type of measures, the collaborative approach is considered the most appropriate and efficient and was adopted in present research. Collaboration is a key principle in community psychology as it brings science closer to practice and promotes community-centered models. It is also linked to, eco to the ecological perspective um, as it allows the transition from an individual level to a community level that takes into account historical, cultural, economic, and political strengths and weakness. It allows listening to excluded populations, valuing their experiences and knowledge. In mental health, collaboration is considered a means to reduce user dependency and rebalance power relations. It also promotes a better understanding of needs and resources with the aim of intervening more effectively increasing user satisfaction. Thus, collaboration is a means to promote the empowerment of participants at the same time as the ecological validity of research fostering social change. Regarding an innovative framework, we adopted the capabilities approach that emerged as an innovative alternative in the area of economics and human development by economist Amartya Sen who redefines the criteria for quality of life. In this approach, the focus is not on the lack of resources, but on the lack of freedom to access resources among social groups that generate inequalities. Capabilities are understood as substantive freedoms, that is, the opportunities that, that people may have or not to, to freely choose and act. They are also defined as combined capabilities as a result of individual skills and the opportunities of the environment. Sam has collaborated with the philosopher and policymaker Martha Nussbaum on studies of social justice and the quality of life of socially disadvantaged populations. After cross-cultural studies, Nussbaum proposed a multidimensional list of 10 capabilities they mentioned that include primary goods and economic, political, social, and civic liberties. According to the author, all people should have the opportunity to, do the, to develop their potential in these 10 domains, and all governments should guarantee social conditions for this. The author also highlights the importance of culturally adapted list basing on the specific characteristic of each group. The values and dimension of the capabilities approach present theoretical coherence with the perspective of community psychology, as well as relevance to mental health. In fact, this approach, in line with the ecological model, emphasizes the connection and interdependence of the person with his environment and seeks to promote the contextual opportunities to flourish individual potential. Furthermore, the two theoretical perspectives defend the promotion of social justice through an equal access to human rights, as well as of human diversity and inclusive societies. As people with experience of mental illness still suffer from social exclusion and discrimination in accessing fundamental rights, the application and adaptation of Nussbaum's dimension is considered relevant in this field. For example, the affiliation capability, which is the capability number seven in Nussbaum list, refers to the promotion of community integration and social support, while the ability to control the environment reflects the self-determination and decision-making power present in empowerment and recovery models. 
In terms of application, the capabilities approach highlights innovative elements which can inspire the mental health system. That is, self-determination implies freedom of choice among all available social options. It is not considered a free choice if, it's, if it is within a range of predefined and limited options. Once a free choice is made without restriction and preconditions, it is also possible to exercise freedom of actions or agency, which restores the right of citizenship within socially relevant and meaningful roles and activities. Finally, the definition of combined capabilities differs from the intra-individual concepts of competencies and skills, as they may flourish combining individual abilities with external opportunities, thus pointing to the role of the system and support services that have to remove obstacles to integration and provide social and material conditions. Um, regarding now the research context of our work, this work was developed within the Portuguese response, uh, in the Portuguese mental health system, in terms of community mental health structures and services, that is mostly non-profit associations and non-governmental organizations, which are developing programs of rehabilitation and psychosocial support. Most of these services are made up of day centers, social professional units, and residential services like group homes. However, there seems to be no agreement to, uh, in, with regard to intervention model. And national studies have shown the existence of services that provide activities and programs in protective contexts, which have shown low recovery results, in contrast to services that provide programs in integrated contexts such as supported employment and independent housing, which reflect higher individual recovery outcomes. These results emphasize the need for a clear framework to orient intervention. Thus, this research was built around two principal research questions. First, it is necessary to apply the collaborative approach in the evaluation processes and in the construction development of relevant measures. Two, it is necessary to disseminate measures inspired by innovative theories based on individual potential. And therefore, two main uh, objectives have been outlined. The first is to collaboratively develop a measure inspired by Nussbaum's capabilities framework. And second, analyze and validate from a psychometric point of view um, the questionnaire for a proper dissemination and application in other studies. To achieve these goals, four so sequential and independent studies uh, were designed. The first, qualitative for the development, second, to analyze the content validity. The third and the fourth are quantitative studies to analyze. Ex uh, the exploratory and then confirmatory uh, structure of the questionnaire. And I will now briefly describe each of the studies, but they, I will skip um, statistical and technical information. The first study about the development uh, is described in the paper that was published in the Psychiatric Rehabilitation Journal. And we would like to highlight that in the authorship of this paper, the group of users who collaborated, um, collaborated strictly uh, with that um, is, is part of the authorship in this paper. The first study um, consisted in four phases. The first one to collect data with 50 users from two services in Lisbon um, throughout 11 focus groups in order to discuss about the promotion uh, of recovery and community integration. Thus, we asked to identify gains and goals um, in some crucial areas, namely education, employment, housing, social and family relationships, social participation, physical and mental well-being. For the data analysis, a steering committee was constituted. 
composed by a majority of people with mental health problems in order to have a strong representation of their experience and perspective. The steering committee organized the data in two categories and two categories among 20 meetings and 104 contests were selected corresponding to the most frequent uh, of each subcategory. An opening sentence was elaborated that is through the support of the service I achieved with the aim of promoting critical self-reflection on the capabilities achieved through the support received. In the third stage of the development, the same steering committee organized the 104 contests according to the design uh, domains of capabilities by NOSA. And for that pur purpose, a training session on the author's framework was held and the capabilities list was translated into Portuguese. This study also resulted in a cultural adaptation of the list, that is, the definition of each capability was reformulated according to the experiences and values of the group in study. Finally, we organized also face validity, including 15 users. The um, second and third uh, studies resulted in a publication on, in, the, in the American Journal of Community Psychology with the collaboration of, of Professor Mary Beth Sheen, a senior researcher in community psychology and also in the application of the capabilities approach in community mental health. Um, for uh, the assessment of the content validity very quickly, uh, we um, adopted again collaborative approaches, inviting a mixed panel composed of three users three professionals and two senior researchers to analyze the content validity, both from a quantitative and qualitative point of view, to have uh, data about relevance, clarity, and adequacy of the material. From this stage, we obtained a 98-item version of the measure. Uh, in the third study, quantitative, we had 332 participants. I apologize that uh, I have here some Portuguese words, but it, it, it was a picture and I was not able to edit this picture, but I will mention the essential of this uh, table only to describe a little bit the sample. Um, um, the average of age was 44 years, 30% were women, the most frequently diagnoses reported were schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, and nearly 80% have had been hospitalized at least once. In terms of housing, 46% lived with family, 30% in independent housing, and 20% in group homes. In terms of employment, 62% of sample declared they wanted to work. At this site, um, 50 community mental health organizations participated around Portuguese uh, country. And the quantitative protocol was composed by a consent form, social demographic variables, and question concerning uh, variable, individual variables. Uh, our version uh, in our 98 item version of the questionnaire, and then three measures, three more measures to assess the construct validity, all validated in Portuguese, um, namely a scale on quality of life, a scale on recovery, and a scale on general psychological distress. Okay, um, several statistical analyses were performed, but I will skip this information. Uh, in terms of results, I only want to uh, mention that from the parallel analysis, we obtained six factors and dimension were labeled by a panel of researchers and users who had already participated in one of the collaborative studies, studies and were named optimist, affiliation, activist, practical reason, self-determination and self-sufficiency, and uh, family. Each
each of these uh, dimensions will be described later in this presentation more in detail. Okay, uh, it is here important to highlight uh, one output of the cor correlational analysis that we performed, um, namely the questionnaire and its subscale um, relation with the housing variable. In fact, it was observed that the dimension of self-determination and uh, self-sufficiency um, um, were positive correlated with the condition of living independently and negative correlated with the condition of living with family members. We will, uh, after, um, come back to this in interesting uh, result. The fourth quantitative study um, is forthcoming also in the American Journal of Community Psychology and uh, had participation 225 users. Characteristics of the sample were very similar, 41 years uh, old as average, 44% women, most frequent diagnosis again schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, 52% of the sample living with family, and 55% uh, declare to, uh, are, to be willing to, to work. 11 community mental health organization, organization participated in this phase and the protocol was almost the same. Only an empowerment measure was added as the optimist dimension presenting theoretical coherencies with the concept of individual empowerment. Uh, again, several, several analyses were completed, including descriptive statistics, reliability, convergent and divergent validity, and the confirmatory factor analysis was performed using the maximum likelihood method. Different indexes of model fit were observed, and uh, this six-factor version uh, of the previous study showed scarce outputs of the model fit, therefore more analysis of discriminant validity of each factor were performed, suggesting a shorter version of uh, five factors. Okay, so the definitive version uh, is composed of five dimensions and 43 items with good results of reliability and uh, also convergent and divergent validity hypotheses were both confirmed. We hereby want to uh, highlight again uh, the, the comparative studies with the housing variable, specifically people who live independently again showed higher levels of self-determination self and control than people who live in group homes. Uh, while participants that were working in integrated context showed higher results than participants without professional experience. Okay, this is the final model of the measure of the chief capability question of community mental health. Uh, these models for better view uh, will be available in the publication in press in the American Journal. Um, this questionnaire is a multidimensional and multi-level instrument that comprises personal, interpersonal, social, organizational, and political elements. It represents the expectations and needs of users, that is dimensions that they would like to achieve through the support of the service. In this way, services may assess their role in fostering capability. It is a self-reported measure with the aim of promoting participants' critical thinking about their paths and achievements. Now I'm going to present more details about the dimensions, its indicators, and their implications for community mental health programs. The first dimension of the questionnaire is the optimism dimension, which embodies emotional well-being, feelings of hope about the future, joy and self-esteem, which also involves valuing individual abilities, carrying out activities that are useful for one's life, 
and these indicators suggest in, in terms of implication the promote the need of promoting sustainable responses which promote stability to accomplish life projects with a future perspective the need to identify abilities and foster each person's potential potential developing specific responses the promotion of processes for choosing and defining life projects that are considered useful and relevant, relevant by users themselves, which is quite different from selecting within a bunch of activities defined by the service. The affiliation dimension, second one, refers to the need to promote feelings of belonging to the community, as well as acceptance and respect within the social context. The need to develop new relationships and social interaction is also mentioned, as well as to use public spaces and natural contexts in a safely and comfortably way. This dimension clearly refers to the concept of community integration, emphasizing the due importance of socially relevant roles that implies the status of active citizens in integrated contexts that is the same ones used by the general population. To support this effective integration, flexible and diversified services are required. Activism is a dimension that serves particular attention, being very innovative and emblematic, considering that we are talking about an historically oppressed and excluded, excluded social group. It joins a series of claims in terms of active political participation also presented in Nussbaum's framework. Users actually report willingness to have a meaningful role to represent their own group in the mental health system, to participate in and intervene in public events on mental health, to exercise formal roles in the services as in directory board, to defend the interests and citizenship rights, and finally to participate in self-help groups. These indicators converge with the scientific evidence that underline the need to promote an active voice and leadership of people with lived experience of mental illness. Therefore, services need to provide concrete opportunities for political participation, where users' perspectives may be heard and included as well as formal decision-making roles in services, which is even recommended in studies on organizational empowerment. Finally, it is recommended the need to promote opportunities for peer support, which is largely, largely recognized in literature as a unique source of support based on reciprocity and advocacy as a collective and empowering means for activism. Self-determination and control is also a fundamental dimension as it highlights the concrete domains in which users feel the need for control and autonomy, namely in their daily routines and in life activities in the management of material goods, including money ma management. Access to independent housing and financial autonomy are also included and considering that around the 60% of the sample of our study declared to be willing to work, the need for professional integration is compelling. In this sense, supported employment and independent housing may be the most feasible responses to promote autonomy and sustainability. This dimension also reflects users' need for autonomy and independence regarding mental health services and providers. And these indicators, indicators stress the urgency for a collaborative and empowering, empowering relationship with users. Finally, the last dimension is considered a specific factor within, within the social relationship of the group in study. Since most still live with familiars, as we've seen, and several studies report experiences of discrimination within the family. This dimension actually refers to the need to feel accepted and to improve family relationships while continuing to participate in family life. Also considering the correlational studies with the self-determination and control subscale, 
there is a need to improve a positive relationship based on users' independence, for instance, regarding housing and financial dimension. We hereby uh, would like to highlight the main results that we obtained through the collaborative processes. First, the transformation of tra traditional research roles as everyone, everyone equally contributed to the research task. The creation of specific structure for dialogue and decision-making processes, such as the steering committee and the mixed panel for the assessment of the content of the book, promoted open communication, trust, respect, and mutual learning. Second, the sharing of power and control throughout the data analysis in the first two studies promoted users' empowerment. Their perspective was valued and prevailed to clarify and interpret the data, as well as to choose a clear and appropriate language to be used in the measure. Furthermore, new knowledge and skills related to research processes and the theory of capabilities were promoted, provided a process of capacity building. Finally, the research processes and results are considered valid from an ecological point of view since they were validated by representatives of the population and consequently the pertinence and cultural sensitivity of the measure was ensured. In terms of, of implication for practice, we highlight that it's important that service outcomes reflect the user's goals. Users are, your, are a unique source of information about the lived experience of mental illness and of service use. Thus, it is recommended to use collaborative processes to identify needs and expectations, which are fundamental for the planning, delivery, and evaluation of services, as well as for developing evaluation measures. Research, result, research results should provide collaboratively validated knowledge, and in that way, it will guarantee also useful and sustainable results for the community in study. Finally, some considerations for public policies. The clinical perspective about people with mental health problems as, a, as pathological individuals does not consider the social context and consequently the intervention is designed based on disability. However, a multi-level and ecological analysis is critical for groups suffering social exclusion and discrimination. It is important to use a social model for mental health that allows changing the intervention paradigm and the focus from individual's deficits to social problems in order to identify structural, political, and institutional failures. It is recommended to use the capabilities approach to rethink the role of users and to restore their freedom of choice and action as well as to replace segregation models with models of effective integration. Finally, it is proposed to use the Achieve Capability Questionnaire to contribute to the monitoring and evaluation of community mental health services. And thank you so much for your attention. I will stop the presentation. Thank you so much, Patricia. That was a really fascinating presentation. Uh, it's uh, it's a shame that in online talks we can't have like the clapping of hands, but it's always so empowering. It's so beautiful. But I, I, I think I can speak for everyone here. We are very much clapping our hands for you. It was really an inspiring presentation a very thoughtful and meaningful research which i mean involved definitely a lot of work a lot of thinking a lot of reflection um i think it's really uh, it's really powerful so thank you thank, thank you. you for that and before i mean i would, i have a lot of comments and <laughs> ideas questions but before that 
we still have our uh, amazing discussant. Um, so I'm pleased to give the floor to Professor Nalash and we are very much looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Francesca. I want to, to express my thanks to Francesca and to the European Association for uh, having uh, to um, for organizing this webinar and inviting uh, Beatrice to present in this uh, excellent work. I've been uh, um, uh, been part of this process, and uh, I can tell you that um, Beatrice, after uh, finishing. Uh, right away, uh, when she finishes PhD, she start, She had the opportunity to put in practice all this uh, research and this uh, and this study and uh, the implications and the uh, the, the the impact has been huge. Um, uh, the, I would like to um, briefly to say what I think that it's more relevant for mental health. Mental health needs very much this kind of work because the institutionalization uh, brought uh, a lot of new problems. And one of the new problems is language, the new language. We did a lot of uh, transform transformative changes uh, closing psychiatric hospitals and creating other organizations or other service. But uh, a lot of, we observe a lot of new problems we didn't resolve. So we observe a transinstitutionalization of services and ideas and concepts. So there is a, this emptiness of um, new conceptualization about mental illness and about uh, how to work with people, uh, with users, with consumers. And this work has been fundamental to give us new uh, words, new concepts, new visions. For example, uh, the concept of capabilities that uh, Beatrice used, uh, as she said, from uh, Sen and her husband, has been very important because uh, they use this work in a more broader way, not for mental illness, not for mental health. They use for these concepts came from uh, women's studies and uh, poverty situations. Most of them, uh, some of them applied in, uh, so, uh, in South America and other countries with a, a lot of poverty. So this, it was very important because it was inspired of the the, the human rights, uh, human uh, ch social change and social transformation. So, but yet using this transfer, this new vision, this new language, this new conceptualization of capabilities to the mental health. This is the first contribution of this work. And it's very, 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 very relevant. So it's the, the, the instrument and the, the, the theory is not centered, is not focused on mental illness and psychopathology. Like uh, uh, before this study, most of the, the, the instruments were very focused on mental illness and psychopathology, states on depression, on self-concept, on self-image and many other things like that. My students had a lot of problems getting instruments to do something different. With these capabilities, first, it's different than skills. Brings a new vision of a, an alternative to the most used concept in psychology. Generalized, it was the theory of skills. Capabilities is very much more than skills and put uh, the rationality and the capa capability of each person to think and to rationalize uh, our, our own behavior. So it's a, a step further of the skill theory that has been very much applied. As she described this questionnaire talks about life, health, body integrity, 
practical reason, play, control over the environment, and many other uh, issues that it's very, very different than what is usually uh, uh, talked in the, the mental health field. The implication of this study is, uh, is uh, her conclusion, the conclusions, it's very clear, but I have, I have, been, I have had the opportunity to observe directly the consequences, the implications. Some people ask me uh, in other universities, well, professor, how you, you have the PhDs, we have so many problems with our PhDs, they don't have the opportunity to, um, to start working and to put in practice. This, it was not happened. Here we have university in the school, PhD students, PhD research, and we have field work organizations that have this opportunity to, to put in practice what we research. And uh, what we observe, like the conclusions. First, uh, uh, Beatrice, in the last two years after she finished this uh, PhD research, she has been implementing and in putting in practice the creation of the movement of the leaders, of consumer leaders in, in Portugal um, with other uh, research projects uh, that has been used uh, also very important to, to achieve. And she organized recently an international conference of leaders for the consumers. This is very good, uh, uh, very good creative application of, the, uh, of this study. I would like to say something also very relevant. I don't know if it was clear, but I can uh, witness the uh, one of the more important things in this study is the collaborative research approach since the beginning. Even we were able, the research agency, the research center, not in the agency, in the term that Beatrice used, but the, the research center, accept the, uh, to contract a person with a mental health problem. And we, when they, they contract, they knew that she was a consumer. This is something new. It was not hidden, the, 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 this uh, uh, self-experience. We, we ask, we want a contract of a person with mental health, mental, ex, mental health experience, self-experience, and they accept. <laughs> Officially, that was. Um, and the other thing, as you know, my colleague, dear colleague Donati is here. Hi, Donati. We, in our generation, uh, researchers had a lot of power, not less power than psychotherapists. And um, Beatrice and other colleagues in the world were able in this world, in this research, to apply the collaborative perspective. The steering committee composed by professionals and, and consumers. And it was a very interesting experience and she can have a next webinar soon, if you agree about this collaborative approach and the implications of this collaborative approach for research has been so huge because now we think like this, if we were, if we were able to have collaborative approach in the research and putting researchers working with the participants with mental illness experience, we maybe are going to be able also to transfer this great experience, scientific experience to the therapeutic relation. And the, the, some people say, no, that is not possible because therapeutic relation is so hierarchical and so strong organized that it's impossible. What is the difference? The difference, I think they are not more, more powerful than the researchers um, uh, 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 during many, many, many decades. So now we are um, using the same values and the same principles and uh, Beatrice is researching that. Maybe she can publish soon something about this. Uh, uh, the principles and values of the collaborative research approach to the collaborative 
uh, uh, intervention in the individual contexts. So, um, as I was saying in the, before, there's another thing very important. She, Beatrice um, didn't, uh, she didn't go too far about the, the statistically, the quali quantitative part, just a little part. But this is a, a, pro, a study that demonstrates there is no contradiction between values, between principles, between quali qualitative uh, analysis and uh, perspective and quantitative. Beatriz was very good using uh, the quantitative sophisticated analysis to present and develop their her principles of the, of the study. So there is no contradiction. Some people think, oh, well, I have to do qualitative research. I think this is one of the most interesting project in European context. I don't say, I don't say universal context because I know, for example, Barry Betchin, that is part of one of the uh, publications. She's very good doing that. But Beatrice brought this perspective there is no contradiction. It was very sophisticated statistic analysis and the, 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 the spread and the defending our principles and values in the research, research process. Um, so I'm not, I can say many other things about the implication, the mental health, now everybody in Portugal wants not, they don't talk calling about housing first. They talk a lot about capabilities too. And they talk a lot about uh, consumer leadership, and uh, this everything is a result. In the de in the public defense of uh, uh, Beatrice uh, thesis, uh, one of the discussion the comment the discussion it was the leader of the mental health system in Portugal. And I am sure that he learned a lot. And now the, we are making changes influenced by this study. This is what we mean, the impact of social and, uh, research. Francesca, thank you for this opportunity. And now you can control it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much for Professor Ornelas. It's always uh, interesting and inspiring to hear your thoughts and comments and also to like contextualize and add to Patricia's presentation, emphasizing some of the key innovative points and original contributions, really. Um, don't want to take more time just very briefly some yeah and clap maria maria joao was clapping her hands I'll, I'll join her clapping my hands um very briefly like uh, a few communications just to say that if any participants or attendees has projects or papers related to this Beatrice's work in the field of community mental health and want to send them, out, them to us. We are very happy then to create like a pool of resources and to make them available on our website. And also please, those of you who are not yet members, I encourage you to join ECPA. We want to launch new initiatives, new projects. There's a project coming out on uh, climate change uh, and and community psychology and a lot of interesting initiatives also related to Naples.